John, I think most people would look around here and say this is a pretty bleak place. It's obviously very arid, um, and yet you're telling me this is a very special place. Yeah, we're in the southwest corner of Wyoming. I spent several years up here in graduate school, mm -hmm. and so we are standing uh, on, I know it doesn't look like a lake as you look out here, but we're standing on the sediments that got laid down in a lake and now have turned into rock. Yeah, the lake we're talking about filled up this whole basin, mm -hmm. which is huge. Yeah, and I can actually, from where I'm standing, I can see the edge of the basin over there. You can see these white sediments, and then those are truncated by the darker colored ridge right behind there. And the rocks in that darker colored ridge are actually sitting up like this. So that's the basin edge. Is that then part of the evidence that you would say that this is post-flood? Because right. all of these are all very horizontal. That's right. So the layers that we're looking at here, this is the early part of the Cenozoic, and that would be right at the top of the geologic column. And so we think that Cenozoic rocks in many places around the world, not everywhere, but most of these Cenozoic rocks we think are post-flood rocks. And so underneath of us, underneath of this basin, those Paleozoic and Mesozoic rocks are contorted. But these Cenozoic rocks on top, these are horizontal and flat lying. They're not contorted at all. So that means that the tectonic activity had pretty much ceased when this uh, lake basin was, was filled up. So we have this uh, basin, it, uh, it's filled with water, and we obviously then have a lot of life. When we were in the museum, we saw, I don't know how many different species of just fish and all of that. So this was a flourishing area. Yeah, it's amazing. All kinds of life. Where did all of this life come <laughs> from? So it's interesting, we see things like the bats, the horses, uh, things like the alligators, and we know the birds, all those things, they were air-breathing animals. Many of them lived a lot of their life on the land, and they would have had to be animals that were on the ark. And something happens that's different from the rocks that we see underneath. We don't see many mammals in those rocks, and all of a sudden, we get to these layers, and believe it or not, Dell, there are more mammal species known in the rocks of the Green River Formation than are currently living in Wyoming today. But that sudden arisal in the fossil record of, of mammals uh, should tell us something. Yeah, uh, the very first bats that we find, the very oldest bats that we find, are right here in this Green River Formation and yet they have fully formed wings. They look like modern bats, and where in the world do they come from? Where are the transitional forms from the animals that gave rise to bats if the evolutionary model is true? And so one of the strengths we have in the creation model is that you know, we can explain the sudden appearance of things like bats because we think that those would have been on the ark, and they, they didn't get fossilized during the flood as far as we know. When we first find the bat fossils, they're in places like this, uh, where they have the potential to become part of the fossil record here. 